Hi guys, okay. welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Myself, Keith and Simons, and Jamie Condren is here with you today. And we're just going to preview St. Patrick's Athletic and Red Star Belgrade in the first round of the UEFA Youth League. Obviously, Jamie, the first leg is in Richmond Park this Wednesday. It's a big challenge for St. Pat's, realistically, isn't it? Yeah, it's a huge game. Uh, you know, let's not mis- uh, have any mistakes here. You know, Red Star are definitely the favourite in this tie. Um and I'm sure a few people will know who Red Star are. They're an intimidating team. So uh, I think it's vital that we definitely get off to a good start in Richmond before we go over to Serbia. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was just looking at Pats there as well. Like, you know, Red Star are obviously a huge club, as we know, probably the biggest club in Serbia. But also they do have a very strong youth academy. Obviously Pats do as well, but it's relative. Like, you know what I mean? We're a League of Ireland club at the end of the day. And I was just looking at Pats. Obviously, they won the under nineteen league in two thousand nineteen. Actually, now and um, yeah. you know they beat bowls and penalties. But you've got players like Ben McCormick, Dara Burns, etc., who are huge stars in those teams. And we were kind of questioning whether they'll be allowed playing this match because, of course, on Wednesday, St. Patrick's Leg do have a league game in Drada on Friday, and Burns, the first team player, McCormick, you know he's in and out, but he's an option to Stephen O'Donnell. Do you think the likes of them, obviously James Abankwa now is Darsus against Shamrock Rovers, yeah. do you think the likes of them be made available for this game? Yeah, it's an interesting one um, because maybe from the close point of view, they see getting into the next round as a, you know, a good bit of prize money for the club. Whereas on the other side of things, you know, the league probably takes priority over everything and Stephen O'Donnell will ultimately probably mm. have the final say. So, it's an interesting one. Um, I think Probably Ben McCormick won't feature, to be honest. I can't see him playing. I think as a midfielder as well, you want fresh legs if he comes on or whatever. You don't want someone that's picking up knocks against a team that probably are going to be a lot more physical than us as well. So um, as for the other two, Dara, Dara Burns, no way. no chance. I, I can see Dara Burns starting on Friday. So definitely not. And then with James Abankwa, you know, maybe a few weeks ago, I would have said, yeah, but um, now that we have even more... Uh, injuries at the back with Lee Desmond, you know, obviously Melanie's injured for a long time now. Um, I think a banquet is also vital. So for me, I probably wouldn't play any of them. Maybe I can see a few of them making a sort of like a cameo appearance, maybe 60 minutes into the game, but I can't see it personally. Yeah, it is tricky because you feel like they're going to be missing a lot of their best players if that's the case. Mm. But as you say, like Dar Burns is now one of the best young players in the league. He's playing week in, week out. Like, you know, it's difficult. Can he play in the Wednesday and the Friday? Maybe that's a question as well. It's going to be interesting to see, but we don't really know. Like, they still have the likes of Josh Keeley, who was the under-19 player of the year. Keen Corberly, who's a lovely footballer. He's still only 17. Mm. Adam Murphy, I think he's still 16 as far as I know. And obviously Tommy Lonergan, who featured for Pats as well in a cup game against Bray, as did actually Corberly as well so they still have good players but I was looking back at the game against Bowles and I was looking back at the team you know they'd Dobbin playing that match they'd Kyle Robinson playing that match so I'm not going to say it's a tough one because they're not going to say that like you've other young players coming up so I'm not going to say it's necessarily going to be a weaker team but it's, they certainly won't have the best under 19s available to them I think Yeah um, I suppose that's the way it's going to go you know at the start of the season there was going to be a chat um, of course, we didn't know we were going to get into this Champions Park up until a few weeks ago. It was all based on the seeding of uh, the national team. So we needed results to go our way to even be at this stage. So um, ultimately, we don't know. But like maybe at the start of the season, if we knew this was coming up, uh, maybe Robinson wouldn't have been loaned out for the full season. And we could have kept maybe a few more players. It's impossible to say, though. But um, like you said, there's a new group of players coming through. Um, you mentioned most of them. I'd say maybe... One player that people should keep an eye on is uh, Ross Fay. He's a very tidy player. Um, he hasn't made any starts for the senior team, I don't think, yet. But uh, from what I've seen, he looks very good. So just keep an eye out for him on Wednesday. Yeah, we've got Norris as well. That's one I left out, I think, as yeah. well, in fairness. But um, yeah, I mean, they pose a big threat. But at the same time, it's fantastic to see League of Ireland teams actually playing in underage competitions against the likes of Red Star, Belgrade. Personally, I wanted uh, Pats to get a big name team, to be honest, mm, which I don't know about yeah. you. Yeah, definitely. Why not, like, you know? Yeah, of course. Um, it's a shame as well that we can only sell out the painting stand at Rich- Richmond because, um, like you said, if we drew a big team, you know, It'll be interesting. I'd say you get a fair few down to Richmond just to see some of these superstars that will hopefully break through other teams in Europe in the next few years. Yeah, exactly. You've done a little bit of research on Red Star Belgrade, yeah. didn't you? 
<laughs> yeah, I have a few players for uh, us to watch out for on Wednesday. So I'll start with um, a central defensive midfielder. His name is Vladislav Golding. I'm going to struggle with a few pronunciations here, but I'll try my best. Oh, you're doing uh, it, not me. I'll do the Pats <laughs> ones. <laughs> so uh, he's a player that sort of sits in front of the back four. Um, he's only 17. He featured for the, the Russian underage uh, setup for the last few years. So he's definitely highly rated. He's um, a big physical lad. I think he's six foot two. So he's going to be dangerous. He'll be um, looking to break up play. Then, as well, the, the sort of creative player in the team, his name is Euros Brankovic. Um, he's 18. He's sort of been uh, at Red Star for the last few years. He's sort of risen through the ranks. Starting at 15, 16, 17s, and now 19s, obviously. Um, looks to be like a very promising player. Um, hasn't made any appearances at senior football yet, but from what I can tell, he's sort of on the on the cusp of maybe getting in a few cup games or whatever. But the main one, and um, there's sort of a question over this guy. His name is Marco uh Lezatic. He's a, a six foot three striker, um, 17 years old, and this guy looks to be um, a real star. So he went on loan last year at the age of 16 and he scored four goals in 14 games in the second division of Serbia. So like at 16 years playing men's football, obviously he's six foot three. So he's going to be well able to cope physically. So uh, with that goal scoring record, you know, I assume a lot of them 14 appearances would be off the bench as well. So he looks to be a, a dangerous player. So then obviously we have to look at, um, will he play as well for Red Star? You know, it's impossible to tell. Um, I'm not sure when their next game is coming up for the senior team but um, he's featured on the bench so far this season for Reds there I know we're sort of coming into the season because um, they have the same format as the Premier League but um, he also looks to be a player that is promising and is going to hopefully not play from a Pat's point of view <laughs> I'd imagine actually they're more likely to kind of let players go than we are because of the situation we're in. You mentioned injuries before with Pats, but not even with injuries, but a lot of these players are forced their way into the first team squad regardless, like because they're good players as well. Um, and I'd imagine of a feeling they're going to be stronger. I have a feeling they're going to have more players available at that age than we are, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, as I said, it's a massive challenge for Pats. Like, um, you know, all they can do is take the game to Red Star and see where it gets them, I think, play their own football as well. But which Pats players do you think are the ones to watch, in your opinion, if you were to name two or three of them? So, you won't like name McCormick said, and Burns because mm-hmm. we think it's yeah, to play. Yeah, so I'll, I'll stick with uh, Ross Faye. I think he's very tidy uh, in the middle. I think him and Corbley, mm-hmm. uh, they'll be hoping to really get on the ball and keep Pats ticking, you know. Two amazing players. I think Ross Faye is sort of featured out wide as well in a few games. So maybe he'll be sort of a free man. I don't know uh, how we'll set up, but there are definitely players to watch out for. And then, like you said, Norris, um, he's clearly rated. Although he hasn't got a senior contract yet, mm. he is constantly on the bench. And um, now that we've brought in more strikers in the senior team, he's featured less. But um, Stephen O'Donnell, who's the senior manager, clearly rates him enough to throw him in with the, with the senior squad. So that's obviously the likes of Gerald O'Brien giving him, um, you know, good words and, you know, uh, making sure that he's ready to play in these sort of games. You know, just being around senior players is definitely going to help you. So, yeah, they're the three I'd say to watch out for. Yeah, that's a good point you mentioned there, actually, to be fair, because a lot of these players, I think most of the players I've named, even Tommy Lonergan, have uh, been training with the first team squad. So you'd like to think yeah. like that's good for them as well going forward because Pats have some good pros there now as well, which is actually very important, that senior level. So when you get young guys coming in, they're learning a lot. And you've seen I've seen comments from one or two of them as well throughout the season. And, you know, they say that they're learning a lot from the senior pros at the club. And, you know, it's, it's good for them, I think, especially to learn maybe the physical side of the game as well. Yeah, big time. Um, I suppose the League of Ireland, the underage self, it's improved recently. Mm. Like over the last few years, it definitely has improved. There's still work to be done until we get mm. to the level of, you know, Serbia. But um, there's definitely been improvements and hopefully it will stand to them now and they'll be able for a game like this and be able to physically handle a team who look to the... Uh, they almost look looking at their stats like a senior team with their heights and their the size of them. Like so, it's going to be a test. But um, let's just hope the work because there's definitely a lot of work going on behind the scenes that you know as a, as a U team, it wouldn't be out in the out in the public eye as much as a, a senior team. So 
let's just hope the work's being done and they'll have a good account of themselves on Wednesday. I would suggest a few one-on-one sessions with Paddy Barrett might get them yeah. prepared well for this one. Yeah, <laughs> if, you're to ca- if you're to call it, I know it's very difficult, isn't it? It's very difficult yeah. to predict this because uh, for the reasons we went through, really. But do you think Pats have a chance of maybe sneaking a victory? It'd be great if they could get a victory, wouldn't it, uh, going out to Serbia, to be fair? Yeah, it would be great. And I think there's uh, definitely a higher chance of us getting a result in Richmond than away. Mm. But... Um, I, can, I think the best we can hope for is maybe score early and sit deep because they, these guys look like they can play. And um, like you sort of alluded to, it's going to be very hard to gauge where both sides are at. But um, if I was offered a one all draw, let's say, in Richmond, I'd probably take it, to be honest. Yeah, ah, sure. We'll go for 2-0, Pats. Why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guys, let us know what you think of the comments. Are you looking forward to the game? What you think about the under-19 UEFA Championship in general? Uh, subscribe if you're new, hit your bell notification button and like the video. Thanks very much. Brilliant stuff.